Hey everybody, it is Marley Kay, and um, I just wanted to come and do a video today because I haven't done one this week, and also um, because I have just been thinking about um, some things in general, and I'm just give you a disclaimer, I'm sitting outside in my backyard, and you know, of course, when you come outside and try to have peace, your neighbors start doing shit. So I have a neighbor outside that's I don't know what he's doing, cutting tile or something. But um, if you hear some noise, that's what it is. So pardon me in advance. I'm not in my office. But um, I want to talk about nation building. I, I have two things that I'm gonna talk about that I'm gonna do them in a different video. So the first thing I want to talk about today is nation building and how we as black people are not ready for nation building. And um, one of the reasons that we're not ready and everybody in the world knows we African Americans are not ready is because we do not invest our resources, our money, our time, um, good people into doing the things that would make us credible and legitimate and that would move us forward a lot of us are still busy pursuing entertainment um we still love wearing you know white labels um we still like um you know chasing things that are materialistic and we don't like to sacrifice everybody knows that and I'm telling you, everybody knows that because I have worked with politicians. I have worked with um, nonprofit organizations. I have worked I have worked with fundraisers. I have just worked with so many different people. And everybody ha walks away with the same, same, same notion about us. And I can't even argue with them because of my own personal experience with our people. And I'll give you an example. Um, I write grants and I do a lot of work for a lot of different people, but sometimes I end up working for celebrities, um, white and black. But I'm going to give you this example of my black people. So I typically don't have any beef with my white people or if I have had to do some work in the past, Jewish people, let this plane go by. But um, I had a, a client who was wealthy, millionaire, retired NBA basketball player. Um, he had business ventures, but he also had this charity. And he hired me to do some work for him. One, because I have um, background in social services. Two, I'm a former foster kid, so I had some experience in some of the stuff that he was trying to do. Um, so, you know, I was consulting and different things for him, and I was invoicing him, and just out of the goodness of my heart, because his um, charity helped predominantly black people, because if you know um, in most states, black people, black children, you know, are the biggest population of children in the child welfare system. So I um, helped this dude get all kinds of money. Um, and he didn't, he didn't ever want to pay. Like he's a millionaire. Like he lives on a hundred acres of land, beautiful property. Um, he had probably like 40, 50 acres of land where he had this camp for kids, beautiful pro piece of property in the mountains. Um, he had investment properties. He had all types of money and all he ever talked about was making money, making money, making money, making money, telling me, you know, I'm, I'm watching him, you know, day trade and make you know, $10,000 in a couple hours, take that money out and go do something to his property. But when it came to paying me, he did not value me. He thought I was supposed to work for free. And so, um, you know, at the time when I first started working with him, I didn't realize that. I just thought, you know, okay, so this is how, you know, rich people do business. And, I, you know, he had money. I know he had money. I'd been to his property. He'd flown me into town. 
you know, all these different things. But when it when I submitted my invoice, he didn't pay me. And I know this man is a millionaire. I know his family's a millionaire. I know he has he lives in a mansion, he lives on a family compound, he had, you know, all this property. I'm watching day trade. But he didn't think his money was supposed to be used to pay me because I was black. Now, the people that worked on his property, that built his stuff, that did all the stuff that he valued were white people. You know what? He made sure those white people got paid every fucking week. But for me, I had to wait for my money. As a matter of fact, I still haven't got paid. And do you know he still writes me to this day, sends me emails and asks me how I'm doing. He had questions, yada, yada, yada. I don't respond to his messages because he showed me who he was. He showed me what he valued, and he does not value black people. He values black labor, but he does not value my time. He does not value um, me as a person. He does not respect me. And a lot of times, black people, I don't care how much money you have or how little money you have, you show people what you value by what you spend your money on. You show people who you value by what you spend your money on. And black people do not value other black people. And, you know, I look at all the stuff that is happening now. I see all these great content makers on YouTube telling you real things that are valuable and important to our community. And they barely got any followers. You don't see, you know, you you watch them on YouTube when they're live. Nobody is contributing any money to their um, accounts. You know, I don't know if they're making any um, money or if people are giving them donations or contributions. But, um, you know, I, I support a couple of different um, creators just every month. I don't hound them and ask them what they do with the money. My money just comes out and it just goes to them. And I've been doing that for a couple of years now because I understand as a creator and as someone who has who has to work to make money to live because I can't do what my people need to need done because my people don't invest in me. I know what that's like. So when I see people doing good things, I try to either, you know, give a donation. Um, uh, if it's something that I can invest in regularly, even, even DJs on Twitch. Like, I love music. I love all different types of music. If I find a good DJ, I will give that DJ $4.99 a month or whatever it is. Like, that's a, a little bit of money. I, I eat that up. I cannot do something to sacrifice for something that I get pleasure from or I enjoy that or that I benefit from but I can't keep taking from people and not giving back I don't understand that about our people and you know the giving and not taking care of your own people is one thing that is really irritating me and that lets me know that we are not ready for nation building but the other thing is how we conduct business with each other is bad. Like I have so many people that I want to work with and that want to work with me, but I can barely work with anybody because I have to work to eat and feed myself. And I have to go to the dominant society systems in order to do that because I can't get us to support us. Like if, if I was the type of person to, um, sell food or sell y'all some bullshit y'all would love me if I was posing with my boobs out and you know walking around with platform shoes and a swimsuit y'all would love that if I was um making some clothes or you know taking pictures with celebrities y'all would love that like everybody knows we are so simple if I was playing a game and um you know, a baller or whatever, y'all would love that. Y'all like the images of success or entertainment, but you do not like things that will build your own nation and your own community. And it is so difficult to get people to understand that everybody in the world is looking at us. Like, we look so crazy. Um, 
you know, we, we talk about reparations. I personally, I know our people need reparations, but you know what? I also know we are never going to get them. And do you know why we're never going to get them? Because we do not do what other groups do to get the reparations. You do not get the reparations by sloganeering. You do not get reparations by um, arguing with people and asking for legislations to study, uh, you know, reparations. Everybody that's gotten any type of compensation from the government has sued them. And we do not have any groups pursuing any legal um, avenues to sue the government. We got attorneys, but we don't have no attorneys that are actually trying to pursue reparations. When the Native Americans got their money from President Obama in 2010, they had attorneys. I don't know if you know about the tribal systems, but the tribal community, they have their own everything. They're a sovereign nation. They have their own law enforcement. They have their own legal services. They have their own legal departments. They they have they govern themselves. So they do business with the federal government like business entities. We don't have that. Um when the Japanese sued the descendants of the internment camps um, or, and the people who are still alive, when they sued the federal government for reparations, they had an attorney, and their attorney was their people. We don't do that for ourselves. We beg and beg and beg and beg other people to do stuff for us that other groups do for themselves. They invest their money in things that they believe in. And they build their communities. They make people respect them. And they do not walk around begging people to do stuff for them. They don't shit over their people. And if they do, you don't never hear nothing about it because it is not nobody's business. It's community business. So, you know, for us, we we don't have that, you know, when you talk about cold, that's cold. We ain't on cold. We don't have a cold. Um, we don't we we're starting to get people who are waking up, but like it's almost to the point where I'm I'm you know, regretfully saying it, it's almost too late. Um, and then there's not enough of us to do anything significant. At this juncture, you know, at, at where this country is. And so when you talk about people who are actually trying to do stuff, like we're just kind of all scattered over the place and we, we're connecting and doing things. But, you know, we don't have the support of our people. You know, we just kind of fly. Now, nah, nah, I don't want to say fly by the seat of our pants because I don't do that. But, like, I know plenty of black people who are doing good things, and they're not getting the support of their people. And as long as our people can't work for our people solely 100% of the time, and we don't invest in us, nobody else is going to invest in us. You know, um, I, I used to write grants for Jewish yeshivas. I don't know if you, it's like, you know, there's religious schools for just Jewish children. The federal government gives Jewish yeshivas over like $100 million a year between state and federal funding. In, in New York in particular, I don't know how much they get here in Florida, but in New York in particular with the ones that I was working with, $100 million per year. They got pre preschools they have special needs schools for their special needs children like they have their whole community set up and our tax dollars help take care of their community and they will pay me they'll pay anybody that's going to help them get money period even if we have to negotiate even if, you know even if they want to negotiate they pay they understand that in order to get money, you have to spend money. We negotiate. I do my what I say I'm going to do for them. They get their money. They're happy. Um, I can do that for our community, but our community don't never have nothing set up, right? You know, we got churches. They don't have no life in them. We got 
big community centers that's built, they're not built with the intention of having some type of um, revenue generating um, opportunities in them. They're just built for people to come and eat water beans and fried chicken on Sunday and Wednesday or whatever when they have programs. Um, you know, they're not set up for schools. They're not set up to have, you know, adult education facilities, retraining facilities, um, you know, apprenticeships, no, none of that. Like, we don't use any of our resources. Then we'd be mad because other people have stuff that we don't have. We don't invest in ourselves. We ain't building a nation. We building up everybody else's nations, but not our own. And so I don't know what it's going to take for us to understand that in, when you start investing in yourself and when you start doing stuff that other groups are doing and getting on cold, and getting on cold is just not a word. Getting on cold is taking care of your own. It is doing the things that you need to do to develop your own people, your own systems, and try to live in this system, but in your own system. And be less reliant upon the system, which means you're going to be able to set up things so that your people don't have to go work for, you know, the dominant society. They can work for your people. They can teach your people. You don't have to send your school, your kids to racist schools and deal with racist teachers. Um, you don't have to deal with school board, you know, telling your kids they, they can't learn about real history. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, working for the city and, you know, working around nasty people during COVID. Um, we will have grocery stores so that whenever there's a food shortage, we have supply chains that um, provide our community food and we don't have any lapses in anything. We don't have any of that. We don't invest in nothing but bitching. We do that good. Um, you know, and another thing is like with, um, business, um, when you're on code and when you, when you prove that you're nation building, you're able to not just do business with black people. You're able to do business and get green money from all people. And, you know, when it comes to doing black business with black people, I get so frustrated because we don't ever be on point rarely do we be on point if it ain't you know something to do with food or some entertainment if it comes to something else i mean i could give you so many examples here in florida I, i'm always looking for black people to do stuff for the house and they don't ever do right like today i'm sitting around i want a bathroom countertop replaced Guy said he gonna come at noon. First he said it was coming last night. He didn't come. Then he told me it was coming today at noon. It's almost noon now. I'm sitting here talking to you because I'm waiting on him. And he's still not here. And I'm talking to you because you know what? I know based on his behavior, he's not coming. He's not going to be on time. That is so annoying. Um, doing business and not doing the business right doing the business and not showing up on time, doing the business and not communicating properly. How can I trust that we are building a nation when our men folk don't do right? You know, when the women folk not doing right, like when you are seriously trying to nation build, like you, your integrity, your name, your everything is on the line. And we are so like not ready for nation building and it's so frustrating um you know i have a lot of us have gifts and talents and we want to do things for the community but we can't do them because people not set up people not ready and we need to get ready for um nation building you can't possibly say that you're ready for um to be independent, to be a nation, when you are just muddling along, complaining, and not investing your money. When you are ready to nation build, you invest your money, and you invest your time, and that is what you do. There are no other ways around it, and you can't build no nation in five minutes. You can't build a system in five minutes. You are going to have to sacrifice 
in, in order for that thing to work like our ancestors did. And that is something that we do not want to do. And we also have to respect each other. Just like I told you that story about that, um, you know, professional athlete who used me, used my skills. I got him money, did my part, and then he wouldn't pay me. Um, you know, like, what what are we supposed to do? You know how much time I spent doing research, crafting stuff, calling him, sending emails, you know, back and forth. That's my time. My time is valuable. I could have been working for white people who would have paid me my money. I'm not going to be able to get my time back. He got his money and I got nothing. What, do you, what does that say about us when we do that? If you rich, you don't pay. When you poor, you don't pay. You don't pay. You, we just don't pay. We don't, we don't care. We are users. We are welfare recipients. We are welfare expectants. And I don't, I'm not fussing because I know this, this is not everybody. But I'm just saying that we are going to have to change how we treat each other. We are going to have to change how we think about business and life and building. You cannot build if you do not invest. You cannot build anything without investing money and time. And it takes time. And I know people have, you know, you know everybody's struggling. Money is tight. Um, but some, for some people, money ain't tight. You know, you got money to buy Christmas. Christmas ain't nothing. Christmas is a commercial holiday, you know, the white man created to get your money. Instead of investing your money in Christmas, invest your money in something for your people. Um, you know, you're investing in stuff for New Year's Eve and going out because outside open. Outside is not ours. You, what are we getting from going out having a good time? When are we going to learn how to sacrifice? You know, um, buying tickets to go to games and buying wigs and like for what? Like that stuff that as soon as you buy it does not add any value to our community. It does not free us. It does not help us. It puts money in somebody else's pocket. And every time you spend money, if it's putting money in somebody else's pocket that does not look like you, it is a waste. And there is no reason we can't make clothes. There's no reason we can't make towels. There's no reason we can't make everything we consume. But if we don't ever invest the money and the time into those things to make that happen, it's never going to happen. And even if we create it, if we don't support it, it's not going to happen right now. We don't hardly have any black media. We don't have any black news, mainstream. Everybody is doing their own thing. It shouldn't be that. We used to have black newspapers and black people stopped buying uh, black newspapers because they thought the white people newspaper was better. Now the white people, all they do is pimp us for our information. They don't even really have newspapers no more. We all scrolling and everything behind a paywall. We have no way to get information. So those of us who, you know, have the time and energy to filter information and give you information and break that break down that information, like we're taking our time to teach. And often that time is not compensated. Why do we have to do that? Like, we're the only people that do that. I, I have worked with poor Hispanic organizations here in um, South Florida. They don't hardly have no money, but they scrape together whatever they have to get me to help them find money. And you know what? I have done it. I've done it because guess what? They have an energy that we don't have. A lot of times they will organize, get their organizations together, but they just don't have, you know, people who know how to do, you know, what I do. So they find me. I help them. They're successful. They don't need me no more. But they don't ever forget me either when they want something else. They call, they pay. I go do what I'm supposed to do. We finish our deal. We move on. You know, I move on. They move on. But when you don't have people who 
understand that and value that, it's, it's very disheartening. It, and I'm tired of not being able to work with my people because our people don't understand the value of time. Our people don't care about the value of our labor. And I'm tired of our people not saying that they want a nation bill, but you don't want a nation bill. I'm tired of us begging people to do stuff for us when nobody else is begging they just they do it the right way you know if you you want reparations you gotta sue you don't get reparations by saying hey, you can appropriate xxx yeah they can but that's not how those other groups got their money so you know as far as i'm concerned there are some things that i'm gonna have to let go in 2021 um i'm gonna have a new attitude next year and I would like to devote more time to teaching and educating and helping um, our community develop things so that we can participate in society and, and be insulated from some of the things that's coming. But I can't do that if our people are not investing in us. Like, it's, it's just not going to happen. And if I have to go to work, you know, we all got to survive. So if I have to go and, you know, contract with other groups to get what I get to eat, I have to do that. If you if if our own people don't understand the value of nation building, I have to work with the knowledge and information that I have and give it to the people who want it. And, you know, black people are just going to have to stop expecting everything for free. Like, that's the worst thing about us. We think we're supposed to turn on the TV. It's everything's supposed to be free. Um, somebody's supposed to break something down and give you a wonderful analysis of what's going on in society. And it's free. You want it for free. You don't ask the white people to do their stuff for free. You know, you don't ask the Washington Post to give you nothing for free. If it's free, you take it. But if not, you don't pay. Um, you know, why Why do we treat each other like that? Like, we need to investigate, like, what is wrong with us and, and understand that this is a thing that keeps us from moving forward. Um, I, I just don't know what else to do at this point but i know next year i would like to devote more of my time to helping my people and i can't do that if i'm tied up helping other people other groups so you know if if black people want a nation bill you got a nation bill with your time and money um there are no shortcuts um, there is no fast way to do it, and there is no um, way to nation build without sacrifice. If you don't want to sacrifice, then you want to remain a part of the dominant society and remain um, dependent upon it. But if you're interested in getting um, away from that, in which we all should be, but I realize some of us cannot afford to make that sacrifice and I God speed because you're gonna get your ass ate up. You know y'all gonna get your ass handed to you. And I'm telling you, we got like three good years to get our stuff together. Not even quite three. So twenty twenty two I'm on a totally different mission. And you know, for those people who wanna come along, great. If you don't, cool. But I want us to have a different attitude about how we see each other and how we conduct business. We we don't have time for swindling each other out no money. We don't have time to be expecting people to work for free. We don't have time to neglect our prophets and storytellers and historians. Um, we just don't have time because we got we got too many things going on. And, you know, we a lot of us want to move past politics, but we can't even move past politics because y'all don't even have the basics of how, you know, politics and business works. And like I always say, politics is a business. If you can't understand business, you're going to fail at politics. If you can't understand politics, you're not going to do good in business because it's all the same thing. So, you know, think about 
nation building and why we don't have anything. Look around. Look at the black people around you. Look, you know, where they're working. What are they doing? Um, what you, who are they consuming from? Um, what do they do in their free, in their free time? Um, you know, are they reading? Um, you know, and where do you spend your money? That's that's the main thing. We are what we consume. We are what we spend our money on. We become what we invest in. And I'm not saying you got to go out and buy a house and start an LLC. I ain't talking about none of that. It's people doing good stuff out here that you can invest in already, you know, and they might just need $5 a month. They might need, you know, $10 one time every two, three months, something. But don't just keep taking from people because then you become a user. You become exactly the thing that you say you don't like. And we have enough people from, you know, the dominant society using us. We don't need to be using our own people. So y'all start thinking about nation building. You can't build a nation if you don't invest in your nation. You can't build up people to maintain the nation if you don't invest in it. Somebody got the vision. Somebody have the skills. Some people have money. A lot of us going to have to do a lot of different things to make this happen, but it will not happen without those three things. You got to spend your time. You got to spend your money and, and somebody got to do this work. So, um, you know, understand, you know, next year I'm on nation building. I don't want to keep going around and around in circles. I'll talk to you about politics all day long. But it's not going to help us. What's going to help us is liberating ourselves from the system. And if we're going to stay here in America, we're going to have to have ways of doing things that are outside of this system to support our people. And if we're not going to do that, you know, I'm, I'm getting older. So there's an expectation of, you know, for me, myself, that I'm supposed to have a legacy, I'm supposed to be able to show what I've done on this earth. And I don't want what I've done on this earth to be just working for white people my whole life and working for my people and not not being taken care of. Um, so if you are a person who consumes and you do not build and you do not take care of your people you are a welfare recipient you are a taker you are a person who consumes and does not give you do not take care of your people and you are not nation building you are destroying your nation you're destroying the people in your nation and you therefore will never have a nation so um you know i just want to leave you with that um, don't forget to like the video, share it, um, subscribe to the channel because I don't believe in wasting your time. I only come to you when I have something to say. Um, um, again, I apologize for my neighbor. I swear to God, I was out here. It was so quiet. And as soon as I turned my damn camera on, he is out here cutting. I don't know what's wrong with people. Let's get on my nerves. I'm mad. But I love y'all. <laughs> so take care. Um, you know, it's, a, it's one of the messages I hate to give, but like, I just been thinking about people not really taking care of us and people who want to do things for the community, but can't. And then people who use you, I'm tired of being used by black people, tired, tired, tired. I expect to be used by the dominant society, but I don't expect to be used by my own people. So, so that hurts. And so don't be that person. Okay. All right. Love y'all. Take care. Wear your mask because the cooties out here trying to get us. They're still trying to kill us.